Hello and welcome to this examination of Carlo Rossi Chablis wine. John Anile of Georgia is going to be joining me pretty soon. Uh, there was a little confusion about this hangout and it was my fault. <laughs> but because uh, I was saying, he was saying, yeah, we ought to do the hangout tomorrow if you would like. And I was saying, yeah. And then at the end of the hangout, with Eric on his walk hard Wednesday, I said, and then tomorrow night we do Carlo Rossi. I believe I said it kind of fast, so it was a confusion. But anyway, he's gonna join us uh, here on Thanksgiving evening. You might say an examination. It's not dawn. <laughs> not, you're not tasting some alcohol at dawn. No, not tonight, but maybe Saturday. Morning, right? Maybe it'll be a blended Scotch whiskey Saturday morning. Now, let me tell you a little bit about this Chablis. It comes in these huge 4,000 milliliter bottles. Yeah, not 400 milliliters, 4,000 milliliters. They're heavy, $14.98 at Walmart. Fourteen ninety eight at Walmart. All right. Mm. Yowza. You could call this a bulk product. A bulk product. Now, this is the CarloRossi.com website. Whoa. There's a picture of Mr. Charles Carlo. Carlo Rossi on the label. You see that? Maybe you see that. It says, uh, I don't know if this is showing up. I don't know how to do all these internet things. <sighs> Chablis is a semi-dry and light-bodied white wine with a crisp, light taste and flavors of ripe pear. That's a bad sentence. Who wrote this? <laughs> Can be enjoyed with grilled seafood, pasta dishes, or salads. Chablis is a semi-dry and light-bodied white wine with a crisp, light taste and flavors of ripe pear, period. Should start with capital I-T. It can be enjoyed with grilled seafood, pasta dishes, or salads. And I think it should have a comma between pasta dishes or salads. I'm from the old school comma world where you separate things in a series so it makes sense, but that's just me and being having clarity did you know did you know another wine that carlo put his unique spin on chablis is an old world style from france it is actually supposed to be from france not california chablis is a region of france not california but that's okay because we appropriate things in america traditionally made with chardonnay grapes the wine is light bodied and semi dry. So, light bodied and semi dry with subtle hints of tree fruit, tree fruit like a, like a peach. Caring is sharing, it says Facebook, Twitter, or Pinterest. Where to buy? Okay, so it's, you saw my, you saw my solo review of this. You and those four or 500,000 other people. Well, it wasn't really that many, I'm exaggerating. It's so pale. It's also very pale, and it's like the color is like a green yellow, a yellow green, like a like a white grape. You know how a white grape is yellowish green, not really white. Oh, the aroma! I was thirsty. Thirsty. I had to take a, a sip. <laughs> I hope you had a good Thanksgiving day. I did. It was really nice. 
It wasn't too elaborate. It wasn't too spectacular. It was very simple, but it was very nice. It's fruity. It's pun. Is it pungent? Oh, my nose got in there. All right. Okay. Okay. I did not drink a lot today. I had the Dawn Busters Taste Challenge. That was a reasonable amount of the two scotch. I did drink a little too much of the 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 the, the, the Buchanan's Deluxe because the thing doesn't pour right. It's got that little ballpoint pen ball in there, and then it just start pouring out. <laughs> okay, so that was done. And then later in the day, much later, like at 8.15, no, correction, about 8.20, 8.25, I did the a solo review of Bud Light Orange, soon to come. Very surprised by what I encountered there. I did the 25-ounce can. And so that was it. Drank a lot of water with lunch and after lunch, dinner, lunch, whatever you call it. What do you eat that? What's that big meal called in the middle of the day? Dinner, right? If it's like a sandwich, a ham sandwich with cheese and mayonnaise and some potato chips, then it's lunch. But if it's a big Thanksgiving dinner, right, it's not a Thanksgiving lunch. It's a dinner. And then more water and then two Keystone ice, 12 ounce after coming home. And now this. You say, wow, that's pretty low profile for Thanksgiving Day. Most people get ripped. Uh, well, I don't know if most people get ripped. I mean, know a good amount of them do, maybe a plurality. Okay, the taste. They're talking about light body. Yeah, it's pretty light body. But to me, it's more like light to medium body. Semi dry. Yeah, it's kind of dry, but then it's kind of sweet. It's kind of sweet and it's kind of dry. With subtle hints of tree fruit. Yeah, there's peach. But you know what it mainly tastes like? Yeah, white grapes. Now that weird roof and tar thing I encountered early on when I first popped the bottle, or should say twisted the cap, that that never re resurfaced after the second or third sampling. So now it just tastes like white grapes. And I, I can, they're okay, white grapes are okay. I prefer them in a wine presentation than eating them raw. But I told you I don't like fruit. I like wine. I like fermented fruit, okay? Remember at the wedding at Cana, right? The wedding at Cana. Jesus turned water into what? Wine. Did Jesus turn water into grape juice or fruit? No. Think about that. And good wine, too. Not... <clears throat> not a uh, cheap one because remember the people at the wedding said "Ooh, they usually serve the best stuff at first and then as you've drunk through the night and the wedding party's going long then they start serving the cheap stuff because you wouldn't realize that you'd be so uh exuberant from the drinking and they were shocked because they said this man this host they don't know they're drinking at the wedding he saved the best till last, so they were so shocked by the wine that Jesus made. Shrimp skewers, this is the suggested recipe, shrimp skewers, and there's a photo, view the recipe. Well, that looks very nice. I'm not gonna do the recipe. Our story. Okay, Carlo Rossi ostensibly started in 1975, but really, it was way before that. So like they're talking about, since 1975, people have picked up their favorite jug. 40 years, well now it's 43 years, they need to update the website. And they're talking about the jug, Carlo Rossi, a salesman, started working for them in 1953. And now here's where the thing gets a little clarified. In 1962, Carlo Rossi Red Mountain Wines were introduced. Wines, plural, and quickly became one of the winery's top sellers. So it really goes to 1962, Carlo Rossi Red Mountain Wines. By the time 1975 rolled around, Red Mountain was removed, but it's still used 
it is still in use on some labels. So they got rid of it, but they didn't really get rid of it. And Carlo had become the face and voice of his popular eponymous jug wine. He starred in the TV and radio spots, take, talking, taken to the airways to talk about his good, honest, his good, honest wines that he made for real people to enjoy. His simple, straightforward approach to wine was reflected in these commercials where he was known to coin memorable Carloisms, including the now famous, I like to talk about wine, but I'd rather drink it. And I'm like that too. I like to talk about it, but I'd rather drink it. And I don't drink wine every... Oh yeah, I do drink it every day. Excuse me, never mind. I was gonna say I don't drink it every day, but when I do, there's a commercial. There's a thing. Okay, stop sharing. All right, that's enough of that. I mean, I guess there has been some days in history that I have not drank wine. Have drunk wine. I have to think about it. There's Johnny Nelly from Georgia. Hello. Hey, Ryan. All right, let's see what the people are saying. Any, any chat? Any chatter? No. Live chat. All messages are visible. And even not good messages. But all right, let's see. You mind if I read these? Yeah, go ahead. You do mind or you don't mind? All right. Brian Miller says, Happy Thanksgiving, Colin Trout. How was your Thanksgiving? It was good. It is good because it's still going on. And the Saints game's coming on, so I can't be on here too long. Yorn says, Cheers, Craig Swenson. Just so you know, all I see is a computer screenshot of the wine. Yeah, I, I was doing that on purpose. I was trying to show people the website. Uh, that was that was that was by design. Rod will get on another yarny. Hell yeah. <sighs> okay. Craig says still just seeing the your computer. I know uh, I was trying to do that on purpose. So what I was trying to let people read along with me, like a little tutorial. So what do the alcohol give you, Ronald? What do the alcohol give me? The alcohol give me lots of interesting things to think about that's my answer lots of interesting things to think about craig swimson said that's better <laughs> yeah i mean i wasn't intending to do it the whole time i was just doing that to show the people what i was looking at all right john and Ellie. all right okay you paid 14.98 like me for this no not quite well more a little more uh it was 15.99 for this big Three liter bottle or four liter bottle? Yeah, three liter. No, that's four thousand milliliters, sir. I thought it was a little heavier than the Livingston. That's the big boy. Yeah, so I've never had it before. Just cracked open the bottle. Oh, and it says serve chill. So you have a chill, eh? Yes, I do. Okay, so you, I'm gonna give. I, I've already talked about. It. I like it, y'all. I would buy, I think John and uh, Jean-Pierre might join us, but when I say white wine, he runs the other way. White <laughs> wine to him is like a crucifix to a vampire. He just, he don't like it. But you know what? Why should you address things you don't like? I say, fine, Jean. But one day he'll be back on with some of the red wines. Okay, you have the floor. Go. Thank you. All right. So smells very... Um grape skin forward um not as sweet on the aroma as the um oh what was the white wine we did from um gosh we did another white wine from uh carlo rossi not the rind it smells a little less sweet than the rind yeah we did the rind yeah um, but the appearance is about the same. I mean, and, and the main aroma is obviously is that grape skin. Mm -hmm. um, which follows through on the palate. Um, it is actually pretty sweet. I mean, it's not quite as sweet as the rind, which they said that was their sweetest offering. Um, white wine offering, I guess. Um, it's pretty good. It's it's nothing too complex. You're just getting some nice um, like white grape flavors, some grape skin, 
uh, some of the pulp in the uh, flavor as well. The finish with this one is a lot drier, it seems like, than the rind, from my recollection. Um, it's pretty enjoyable. You're not picking up on any alcohol or anything like that. It's not a boozy wine. Um, no, 10.5. It's pretty enjoyable. Um, it, this would be another one that, I mean, it's good to, to sip on. Um, it's probably great for cooking. Um, it's it's good. Uh, I remember. Go ahead. I was I stopped myself because I was saying, didn't you turn the floor over to him? <laughs> I remember um, when we first started talking about white wine, you were saying, oh, I don't know about that. <laughs> but you've had pretty good experiences so far, huh? So far, yes. And I haven't had too many white wines. I've had I had the Rhine. I had um, drinking this now. Maybe a couple other ones, but of the ones that I've had so far, um, this one's up there. Um, and it is sweet. I mean, it's not, I guess I always had this thought in my head that the white wines were not going to be sweet. They're going to be super dry and kind of hard for me to stomach, but that's really not been the case so far. Um, and this one does have enough sweetness uh, going on to you know, keep me interested, which, which is nice. Cause if it wasn't, if it didn't have any sweetness, I would probably be turned off by it, but there's a nice sweetness. Uh, the dryness on the finish kind of balances it out a little bit. Um, it is a very dry wine. I, I do think it's a lot drier than the other ones that we've had, uh, but it's good. It's very enjoyable. Um, I was saying my overall feeling about the flavor was that it tasted like grapes white grapes, which are really kind of yellow green, you know, but um, it's funny that people call them white because you look at that and say, I've seen that color. That is not a white. <laughs> it looks like some kind of green to me, but don't, do you find it tastes like white or so what people call white grapes? Mm -hmm. Yeah. I said, uh, it's got a lot of that white grape skin going on. And then yes, on yes, the yes. actual, on the actual taste, you're getting some of that pulp as well. That's, like, that's the, right. like white, like Welch's white grape juice. That's right. You said the pulp. Um, the skin gives it a little bitterness, tartness to balance out the sweetness. So it kind of, yeah, it's just kind of like hanging out there. And hey, I need some triscuits. Where's Sandy Duncan? I need triscuit and some liverwurst. <laughs> My fault. I'm glad you were open minded to try these. My father is like so intransigent. You just say white wine. I mean, dry wine. I hate dry wine. He would never budge. I say okay. And then he was thinking about getting back into wine drinking, and but he said no, no, no. I don't want to do it because he bought a big jug of Carlo Rossi Sweet Red, and he drank a little bit of it. Then he said, I don't want that back. I don't want that again. I said okay. Do what you want, of course. So, but he gave it to me, and I reviewed it. I thought it was all right. I didn't like that idea of with natural flavors. I wanted it to be pure grapes, you know. But what? Um, yeah, actually, the white wines that I've had so far are are they're I, some of the red wines. I think maybe like the the Zinfandels are a little even for me. Uh, this one's kind of right in the middle. It, it's nice. It's not too sweet, but it's not. You know, it's it's got enough sweets going on um, without being cloying. I guess is what I'm trying to say. And the and the dryness on the finish is really is really nice. It makes it a little bit more inviting because you, you want to keep sipping on it. Yeah, and I don't think that company Carl. I don't think the Carlo Rossi line. You you're gonna find anything cloying. You might find something a little chewy with that Cabernet Sauvignon, but you're not gonna find anything like. <sighs> I'll give you one other funny little story. We were eating dinner today, Thanksgiving, and I had this bottle of Tabasco. I was really doing it as a test, you know, to be a provocateur. I said, Daddy, I got this Tabasco. You want this? Why would I want to put that on my food? <laughs> I said, oh, okay. Because, <laughs> you know, I put it on the, I put it on the ham. I put it on the stuffing or dressing. People said, what do you call it, stuffing or dressing? I said, uh, I call it both, but I put it on and then I put it on everything, you know, 
I didn't go crazy. Like Lee Poznanski, he was like, we were eating at the restaurant. He was going like crazy. I was looking at him. I said, got a little food on your hot sauce. But um, so, uh, and then he was saying, it's so hot. I was like, well, but uh, it was comical. But so then I put black pepper naturally because I'm addicted to that. So, but uh, it's just funny watching him and the comments he makes. I said to him, I said, you ought to have your own channel. It would be more popular than mine. But of course, he would never do it. But anyway, so I'm going to read a few more comments. But so you would recommend this, huh? I would definitely recommend it. I mean, anywhere from what, like 15 to 17 dollars for a big bottle like this. I think it's a great value and um, it's got enough going on to just, you know, drink it. It's a good sipper and I'm sure it would be great for cooking as well. The white wines seem to be really good for cooking just in general. So, yeah, I have. OK, here's what's coming up next, folks. So we're we're endorsing. Carlo Rossi Shebley, we're saying we like it and we think you would like it, but I don't know. You might be really picky, but we're kind of picky, too, but we like it. So hey. I Keep thought, up. yeah, I never thought I was going to get into white wine. Uh, so. I'm living proof that if you try new things, you might surprise yourself. Right. Now, some people are laughing at that comment. They're saying, yeah, picky. He drinks Keystone Ice. He's picky. Okay. Well, yeah, dang, I'm right. I'm picky. All right. But anyway, so um, uh, here's what's coming up next. I got a bottle of Karabari Marsala in the cabinet, which I paid $4.99 plus tax for. I think it was like same price or... here for the same price for that here four ninety nine so yeah incredible I think it was like, like five thirty six after tax whatever you know I, I didn't think about it too closely but so that's I'm gonna tell J James P Madonna because whoa got some echo issues so James P Madonna he was like geared up for that Krabari Marsala. So I gotta tell him about it because if I left him out, he would just go crazy. He'd be so mad. <laughs> but I wouldn't leave him out. So I mean, that's that's an irrelevant thing to even bring up because I'm not gonna leave him out. Um so he'll join that, I'm almost certain. Maybe some other people will shock us and join. I wouldn't bet on it though, for the Krabari Marcella. I haven't seen too much interest in the wines except for Jean Pierre. Of course, James, you, Jean Pierre. Cause he just did a video for Rio Nidia Lambrusco, but uh, all the rest are just, they don't want to mess with it, which, which is fine. Why uh, examine something you don't care about? I know I wouldn't, uh, but here's some of the ones I'm looking at on their website. You want me to show you? Yes, please. But I've, had a lot, I've had a lot more of them than you have. So you're going to have to do some solos and I'll just watch like, uh, let me go to our wines. Yeah, the one style that I'm very interested in is Burgundy. I've never had a Burgundy. I had it, so I would definitely be interested in trying the Carlo Rossi and then, of course, the, the Livingston Cellars as well because they're oh, both yeah, pretty yeah. cheap. So Yeah, yeah, yeah. You got to do the Burgundy. And I almost, but I didn't do it, but I almost bought that Sheffield was it Sheffield cocktail sherry or Fairbanks? I think it was Fairbanks cocktail sherry. We got to do, I don't know, that's just me. I'm like obsessed with that. This sherry, sherry, sherry. Oh, we got to do cocktail sherry. We got to do, uh, you know, but you know how I am. So, okay, Carlo Rossi Burgundy. We've done, okay, I've done that. I've done the Paisano. I've done the Sweet Red, the Blush. I did, I love that. The Chianti I did, the Cabernet Sauvignon, the Merlot I did. I'm not going to do the Sangria because it's like fake. It's just fruit flavors, not real fruit. I'm not playing around with that. And some kind of spices. I'm going to let other people drink that. But the last one on the red wine list is the White Zinfandel. I want to buy that one next. And that's like the most popular type of grape in the mass market. I mean, the wine snobs. And you know what? You have a right to be a wine snob. If you want to be a wine snob, you have a right to do that. <laughs> but um, they would just be 
totally appalled by white infidel. If you say white infidel, they grab they grab for a weapon, and come at you. Like my neighbor across the street, she said, "White infidel." I go out to eat with my friends, and they order that at the restaurant. And I'm trying to hide my face. I'm so embarrassed. And I'm looking at her like, "What?" And she said, "White infidel is for people that don't know how to how to drink wine." And I was thinking to myself, I didn't say a word. I said, "How to drink wine?" I said, "That's an ultimate." Be wine snob statement because I'm pretty sure they know how to drink it. They drink what they want to drink. So that just cracked me up that she said that. And I wanted to tell her, yeah, but you come, you come over here and tell me when are you gonna bring me some good beer like Ice House. Nah, gotcha. So, but so wine snob, but beer uh, slumming it and beer and loving it. Okay. The white, the white, but she does make a lot of gumbo for me to eat, so I can't say too much. And bakery products, like almond cake. Okay, Chablis, I've had, like we're drinking it. Moscato, sangria, no thank you. The Rhine, I've had, the Chardonnay, I had, and now they got this new one. They're showing pink Moscato sangria. I'm not fooling with those, flim, I don't want to drink those flim flam products. But if you're interested, I would do the White Zinfandel. Yeah, White Zinfandel, um, I would be interested in. You, you're probably not interested in doing the Burgundy again. I don't know. If you are, I would definitely be interested in doing that. Um, the problem with that is that I got so many other things lined up. It's just like, when would I ever get to it? You know what I mean? Right. And then, of course, the Paisano, I really want to try that. If I'm not mistaken, that's an, an Italian style wine, correct? The Paisano? Yeah. Yes. And let me say this to you. Mm -hmm. Remember, Jean-Pierre might do the hangouts with you because he loves the Burgundy. He loves the Paisano. He loves the sweet red. Uh, so he might really bite on those. The Chianti, I don't know. He might. The, the Cabernet Sauvignon, he might. So blush, I don't know why he wouldn't bite on that because the blush was really enjoyable. It's pink, but I, it's kind of sweet. So, I mean, it seemed like he would go for that. So there's a whole lot right there that y'all could get into. The way yeah, I'll have, to, I'll way have I, to contact him and see if he would be interested. Yeah, the way I see it, he would, he would go for it. But uh, so that's that. And now... Uh, uh craig says sorry about the confusion earlier you guys are just so handsome that is true and and so I, but that's just my natural humility talking i don't make a big deal out of my awesome ha handsomeness nor do i promote it in any great regal way but i'm so <laughs> humble i'm so humble about it that i'm quite proud of that fact i think you can understand that Craig Swenson says Burgundy is my favorite. Well, I was, I think it might be mine too. I was really happy about it. Now, when you want to go on a great quest, try to find the Gallo family Burgundy. Man, I had to search so far and wide for that dang thing. But I found it. It wasn't remarkably different from the Carlo Rossi Burgundy, though, so it really wasn't worth the, the search. But I could say I did it. Right. You know what I mean? It's like when you can't get it, then you want it. Like the, that blush Chablis that I had to, you know, go to about 20 different stores to get. Uh, that was just a, that was just a pain in the rear end. I want to show you something my daughter gave me today. It's only 50 milliliters, so it's like one gulp, really. Um, but she was saying, oh, I have, I saw it. And she said, no, it's for you. She bought it in Belgium. Oh. When she was at a duty-free shop. It's called the Balvini. Oh, Balvini, yeah. Yeah, Stop. it's still at the Bal Balvini. Balvini, Balvini, Distillery, 
Banffshire, Scotland, triple cask, age 12 years, single malt Scotch whiskey, David Stewart, the Balvenie malt master. In Dufftown, Banffshire, Scotland. See, look, look at that little tiny bottle. Nice. Now, yeah, I've actually had that. Or years ago, I tried it. Um, I mean, it's, it's pretty good. It's very popular. Um, you know, people that like single malt scotch, it's it's up there. It's a very popular brand. So, oh, I'm gonna have to do a little research because I have a little time. Maybe I could do a re. I mean, because she doesn't like scotch, so she wouldn't want to. She would never want to do a a duo review. I can actually get those small bottles. So. If if you want to do an examination, I can buy a just a little 50 mil bottle next week. Oh yeah. Mm -hmm. Oh, well, that's pretty interesting. So I could do a solo hangout review, ex exemplification, modification, customization, and then you could join me next week for a duo. Yeah. Syndication. All right. Wow, that's pretty interesting. I could get some mileage out of this thing, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and I love to try those Scotch whiskeys. I did a review this morning, and it was a blowout, an example of taste challenge. Oh, I I started watching at the um, Buchanan's and the uh, King Robert. Yeah. Too bad, King Robert, but Buchanan busted your chops. That's probably the most complex peat smoke forward blended scotch whiskey i've ever had yeah but i felt i was hurt though because when i tried to pour it it didn't want to pour that little it's kind of like a ballpoint pen it didn't want to pour and i'm like why won't you pour why won't you pour and i did it again and then it started pouring out i was like no no because you can't get it back in the bottle I the, said, bo well, um, the bottle that you have is a little older the one that i had I think they fixed the problem with that little um, pour valve thing on the top. So. Oh, they got it refined a little better. Okay. Well, I said, well, I got to drink it now. I can't. What I'm going to do, put it back in the bottle. So um, that's impossible. So I thought I would have three taste challenges left with the Buchanan's, but it looks like I'm only going to have one more, which is a big disappointment. Not to say I couldn't buy another big bottle, but there's so many other ones I want to try. I noticed, did you notice that I bought the Chevis Regal gift pack? I think you noticed I did that. Yeah, we were we were talking about that off air, I think, one night. Oh, yeah, but... last night, yeah, right. That was pretty cool. Yeah, that's a an iconic brand. So I, I, I've never had, I don't think I've had that one. Um, no, I never had it. I never had it. I heard about it my whole life, but I never had it. Yeah. It was one of those things like Cadillac or... Uh, it's just a brand that you always heard of. Mm -hmm. Cadillac, Johnson and Johnson, Kleenex, right? Uh, Skippy, peanut butter, Chivas Regal. Um, so okay, well, uh, there's so many Scotch blended Scotch I got lined up in that cabinet. <laughs> I think we got a lot of exciting examinations coming up. That's the way I see it. Oh, yeah. So I, I always enjoy doing these examinations, so definitely. So maybe we ought to look at in December. Could be a very tough month with all the holiday things. So maybe in December we could just do a hangout on Krabari Marsala. What do you think about that? Yeah, that'd be good. I can get a bottle for four ninety nine. so... Uh, won't be uh, coming out of my holiday budget. <laughs> so, yeah, that'd be great. Yeah, James P. Madonna would be hot for that. So um, that'll be a revisit for me. So get ready, folks, for the fascinating, the fascinating world. I have a perverse mind, though. My mind is sick. And I'll say that live on air because I'm talking about Kravari Marsala, but right back here in my head, I'm thinking bad thoughts like, you know, you could do, you could examine a wild Irish rose <laughs> Moscato. And I'm like, no, 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 it's 17% alcohol. That's, 
that's the dark side of the wine world. <laughs> yeah, well, I guess I'm sick too with some of that stuff because I like to try these little, you know, uh, infamous brands. So, and you could buy the Wild Irish Rose uh, for like three ninety nine at the. You know, I can buy a, a little. Uh, what are they? Hundred fifty mil bottle for like three ninety nine. So, most of it is flavored concoction items. But there's two of them that are actual just wine, so-called. The red grape and the Moscato. There's one called White. But I think the White might be just a rebrand of the Moscato. Because when I was looking at their website, they seemed very similar. But down here, it's called Moscato. And it's, uh, or it's White Moscato. That's what it's called. Wild Irish Rose White Moscato, and it's seventeen oh. percent, and it is as smooth as a jackhammer. <laughs> yeah, I was gonna say that's along the lines of the Taylor Dessert wines. So, but I I can pretty much guarantee it's not going to be as good. <laughs> it's made by the same people. <laughs> oh man. Well, we got to think about that if we want to be too notorious, you know. We'll have to get our uh, our ski masks out and our, uh, our our wife beaters. Right. Yeah, we got to get really. All right. Let's see. Last comments, and then I'm gonna reboot this for the the scotch. It's Thanksgiving. El is it, the Saints are playing, so hey. Okay. Let's see. Jeremy Jones says, "Is this?" First love show I've been watching for four years. First live show. No, no, I've been doing live shows for so long. Love your clothes and hats for every show. He's probably talking about the baseball and football apparel. Jeremy Jones says, come down to Baton Rouge, Louisiana. Hey, I was born in Baton Rouge, Louisiana. Try Sailor Jerry O. Dark Rum. Can you shout me out? Night Train. Oh, man, I never did drink Night Train. I know it's made with citrus juice. Oh, man. What must that taste like? Citrus wine. Oh, bagosh. Ash, gosh, bagosh. Jeremy says, Mad Dog 2020. Oh, Mogan David 2020. You're putting other bad ideas in my mind. Bomb wine, cheap, four loco. Oh, no, I can't do that. I did that once. I can't do that again. Chilled and room temperature. I was listening to a, I was listening to an Anheuser Busch salesman yesterday, and he was telling another guy that works for the the bulk merchandiser. I didn't say anything. I was just listening to him talking. He said I had that CBS that founder CBS Canadian Breakfast Stout. Man, that stuff was awesome. That stuff was great. He was going on and on, and the alcohol level was so high, so high. And then the other guy says, "Oh, like four loco." He said, "Bro, don't." Don't say that word for loco around me when I'm talking about CBS, okay? He said, "Don't, don't, don't mention that while I'm talking about CBS." It was that's a, yeah, that's a different galaxy. We're not even in the same solar system here. I mean, that's. I had to laugh to myself. I had to laugh to myself when I heard that conversation. <laughs> oh, that was so comical. All right. Uh, yeah, the people that work for the beer companies and the distributors, they do drink it, too. And they, they're, like, into it, too, because I listen to them talk, and they'll try it all, you know. And they get in arguments about it and tell each other, you're wrong, you're wrong, and all of that. So, of course, they get paid to do that. But uh, um, I appreciate you joining. Yeah, thanks for having me. Uh, I'm very, very surprised uh, with the – with the Chablis, it's better than I thought it was going to be. I thought it was going to be a little too dry and not sweet enough for me, but it's it's nice and balanced. And, um, and of course, to you and everybody out there watching, happy Thanksgiving. Thank you. Same back to you. And you don't see yourself wasting any of that wine. Oh, no. I'll, I'll drink it. <laughs> All right. All right, people. Uh, I had the same thoughts, so I'm not going to add anything up. Uh, Jeremy Jones talking about Wild, Wild Irish has red, blue. Yeah, oh, yeah, they got all kind of weird 
flavors I would never mess with, but I, I would I would drink it the the actual wines that are wine, you know what I mean? Not these flavored concoctions. The wine that's wine. Now I think it was the Mogan David 2020 that made my body feel hurt for two days. <laughs> like my skin smelled like it. It was like seeping out of my pores. It was like, wow, this is, I don't know about this. But I told you my mind is sick. All right. Thanks for watching this video production. It was very nice, Tyler. Oh, Tyler, 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 Tyler. We about I'm about to reboot it on the on the the uh, scotch. But I gotta do a little research real fast. Thanks for joining us, Tyler. Tyler had a good Thanksgiving. And then he showed me a photo of two beautiful fried eggs with hash browns. I don't know when he ate that. And he had past blue ribbon behind it. But it looked awesome. I mean, it really looked good. So thanks, folks.